everybody, it's Kate here from Valeri and today I'm going to be discussing the exercise types, sets, repetitions and loads for your strength training routine to improve overall triathlon performance. So let's get straight into it. Now programming strength training for triathletes can be difficult due to the differences in muscle groups and muscle contraction types used during swimming, cycling and running. So during running, there is a ground reaction force where when we hit the ground, mechanical energy is stored in the muscles and tendons of the lower limbs, and then it's expended during the push-off phase of running. Eccentric muscle contractions, where the muscles are contracting but they're lengthening, happen during this phase, and this puts a substantial load on the body. In contrast, only concentric muscle contractions occur during cycling, decreasing the need for the body to store energy and utilize it in the same way as during running. Then in swimming, the focus is largely on improving pure strength of the propulsive muscles of the upper body. So considering all of this, a triathlete strength training program should predominantly focus on exercises that are in maximal strength training parameters, as well as including some explosive and some plyometric exercises. So let's delve into these and what they mean and what the sets and reps that are appropriate for these are. So let's start with maximal strength training and what exactly that means. Now maximal strength training consists of exercises that are completed with lower repetitions and heavier loads. These programs generally consist of three to six sets of one to eight repetitions at loads greater than 80% of a one RM which is the maximum amount of weight that an athlete can lift for one repetition of a particular movement. This would be equivalent to feeling like you have anywhere between zero to three reps in reserve, which means once you've finished doing the prescribed number of repetitions of a particular exercise, you would have anywhere between zero to three repetitions that you feel like you could do. This may initially sound contrary to popular belief about what type of strength training is optimal for improving triathlon performance, However, research consistently supports the effectiveness of maximal strength training to significantly improve both running and cycling economy, velocity and power at VO2 max, and other performance measures. In fact, maximal strength training programs have shown greater improvements in both running and cycling economy when compared to programs where exercises were completed with high repetitions and lower loads. It's also important to recognize that why it may sound like maximal strength training can be really exhausting on the body, especially on top of your triathlon training, the total load completed during a maximal strength training session is actually less than if you were to do a higher set and rep session. So let's go through a quick example of this. Let's say that I prescribed you three sets of five repetitions at 100 kilos for back squats. The total load that you would lift in this session would be 3 times 5 times 100, which would mean that you're lifting a total of 1500 kilograms for that session. In comparison, let's say that you completed 4 sets of 15 repetitions at a much lighter load. Let's say it was even less than half of that, so let's say it was 40 kilos. That would still give you a total load of 2400 kilograms lifted for that session. That's 900 kilograms more than the previous heavier example I gave you. Now, not only will you be lifting less total volume overall, which will help you minimize fatigue in the gym, but you'll also be targeting maximal strength improvements, improvements in muscular tenderness, stiffness, and other physiological adaptations. On top of this, you'll also be taking less time in the gym, which is really crucial for endurance athletes. Staying in these lower set and rep ranges also keeps endurance athletes out of the more traditional hypertrophy or bulking strength training zones. In athletes who are new to strength training, however, loads should be progressed sensibly to meet these definitions of maximal strength training, rather than leaping straight into heavy loads. This is to ensure that you have proper technique and also to help minimize all of that fatigue and muscle soreness. It's also important to note that injury prevention based exercises and warm up exercises can obviously be at higher repetitions and lower loads. Significant improvements in running and cycling economy and performance have also been seen as a result of explosive and plyometric strength training protocols. Now, explosive strength training refers to the body's ability to produce large forces in a minimal time, and this can be optimized through explosive strength training programs which involve medium to high loads and medium to high velocity movements, such as an Olympic lift or a squat jump. 
These types of lifts are more commonly done in the slightly higher rep range of 6 to 10 repetitions at approximately 60 to 70% of 1RM. These loads can be quite taxing on triathletes who already complete large run volumes and cycling and swimming volumes. So whilst explosive strength training is important for performance benefits, they should be included in smaller amounts and should be complemented with maximal strength training for optimal performance benefits. Now that final component of the strength training that we wanna think about, particularly for run performance, is reactive strength training, or as I touched on, it's commonly referred to as plyometric training. This refers to the ability of the muscles and tendons to produce a powerful and fast contraction following lengthening. This is known as the stretch shortening cycle. Whilst this may sound a little bit initially confusing, we can think of it in terms of jumping. So if we were trying to jump as far as possible, we would bend at the hips and the knees and this would in turn lengthen our muscles and tendons and we would then be able to store energy and then expend this to propel ourselves forward. This stretch shortening cycle happens during running and contributes substantially to running economy. Now reactive or plyometric strength training programs traditionally use exercises such as pogo jumps, box jumps, drop jumps and other movements. These are traditionally done just with body weight or lighter loads such as those as 20 to 40% of 1RM. These rep ranges are generally between 4 to 10 repetitions. These are generally less taxing on the body than explosive strength training, but can still put substantial loads through the ankle and the knee musculotendinous structures, such as the Achilles tendon. And therefore, these should be programmed appropriately. These are really only also specific to the running aspect of triathlon, and it doesn't so much focus on improving cycling and swimming performance. So to summarize, Maximal strength training, meaning lower range sets and repetitions with heavier loads are the best option for improving your overall triathlon performance whilst also minimizing fatigue. This means putting together a program with exercises that consist of three to six sets of one to eight repetitions at loads greater than 80% of your 1RM or leaving zero to three reps in reserve. Triathletes can also complement this with some appropriately prescribed explosive and reactive or plyometric strength training as well. Now you are well equipped with this information, you might be thinking, well, how on earth do I know if I'm at 80% of my maximum? Or how do I know if I'm lifting heavy enough? Or am I going too heavy? Well, make sure you check out this video on the best way that you can manage the load of your strength training exercises. If you're keen to include strength training in your endurance training program, make sure you check out our app for Larry, where we have specifically created numerous strength training programs for triathletes to help improve performance and prevent injuries. If you have any questions, make sure you pop them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all things strength training for endurance athletes. See you next time.